Victorians were astonished when workers discovered a secret room in Thomas Jefferson's mansion. The rumors about U.S. President Thomas Jefferson's affair with one of his slaves, Sally Hemings, started while he was in office in 1802. It was a disgruntled journalist, once an ally of Jefferson's, but later an embittered enemy, who set the ball rolling with articles in the Richmond Reporter. That journalist, James T. Callender, wrote, It's well known that the man, whom it delighteth the people to honor, keeps and for many years has kept as his concubine one of his own slaves. Her name is Sally. The article went on to mention Jefferson by name in case any of his readers were in doubt as to who the man was. Thomas Jefferson was 58 years old when these allegations were published in September 1802, and after a long political career, he'd been president since March 1801. It was a position he was to hold through two four-year terms. This exceptionally eminent American was one of the founding fathers of America and had been the lead author of the 1776 Declaration of Independence. Decades before these allegations surfaced, Jefferson had married 23-year-old Martha Wales in 1772. She was his third cousin and a widow, and by all accounts the marriage was a loving one. Martha bore six children, although only two reached adulthood, including her firstborn, also Martha, pictured here. Jefferson and his young wife had moved into a small cottage on the 5,000-acre Monticello Plantation near Charlottesville, Virginia. Later, Jefferson would build a grand mansion in the classical revival style. As was normal practice in Virginia, the estate land was worked by African-American slaves, and other slaves tended to Jefferson and his family in the great house. Jefferson had inherited the land at Monticello from his father, Peter, after his father's death in 1757. He was only 14 when his father died, so he had to wait until he was 21 before he took control of the estate. Also included in his inheritance were 52 slaves. Consequently, he and his wife, Martha, inherited another 135 slaves when her father, John Wales, died in 1773. So here we have the central contradiction of Jefferson's life. Undoubtedly, he opposed slavery and actively campaigned for its abolition. Indeed, he was the man who wrote the immortal words, All men are created equal. Yet he himself was a slave owner and remained one until his dying day. As we shall see, this contradiction is thrown into even sharper focus by his relationship with Sally Hemings. Jefferson's marriage to Martha was apparently a happy one. She was an accompanied pianist, and Jefferson would often play with her on the cello or violin. But tragedy struck in 1782. Probably weakened by frequent childbirth, Martha died aged just 33 with her husband at her side. Unsurprisingly, Jefferson was deeply affected by the loss of his wife. He spent the weeks after her death riding deep into the countryside, often accompanied by his eldest child, Martha, who was a witness to the depths of this grief. Tellingly, Jefferson's wife had made a death plea with him never to remarry as she could not stand the idea of another woman bringing up her children and Jefferson never did marry again. But although Jefferson was never to wed again, that did not mean that his life was without romance. Although it was controversial for many years, most historians now accept that Jefferson had a long-lasting affair with Sally Hemings. Indeed, she had six children by him, shown to be fact by DNA testing of the descendants of those children, some of whom are pictured here. Who was Sally Hemings? Sadly, no attested image of her exists today, but we do know quite a lot about her, and some of what we know is quite astounding. Sarah Sally Hemings was born into slavery in about 1773. Sally's mother was Betty, and Betty's parents were Susanna, who had arrived in America from Africa as a slave, and a British ship's captain called John Hemings. The original owner of Sally's mother, Betty, and grandmother Susanna was one Francis Epps IV. When he died, his daughter Martha Epps inherited the two, employing them as personal slaves. Martha Epps then married John Wales, who was the father of Jefferson's wife, Martha. Wales took Betty as his mistress, fathering six children with her, the youngest of whom was Sally Hemings. As we've already seen, the Jeffersons inherited 135 slaves from Wales when he died in 1773. One of those slaves was Sally Hemings. So the astonishing fact is that Sally was a half-sister of Jefferson's wife, Martha. And after Martha's death, Sally became Jefferson's mistress. We can only speculate as to whether Jefferson's attraction for Sally was partly caused by her relation to the grief-stricken widower's late wife. 
When Sally came into the ownership of Jefferson in 1773, she was but a babe in arms. Her childhood was spent on the Monticello plantation, although neither she nor any of her siblings worked in the fields. They were instead given positions as craftsmen of various kinds or as house servants. It was the latter occupation that Sally was to be given. We cannot know precisely when Jefferson's relationship with Hemming started, but there's perhaps a clue in the time that he spends in France as an American envoy from 1784. While there, Jefferson decided that one of his daughters, nine-year-old Maria, should join him in Paris. But she would need a companion for the journey, and Sally was chosen for the role at age 15 or 16. Consequently, Sally spent more than two years in Paris. If she had chosen to, she could have left Jefferson's entourage to be a free woman, as slavery had already been abolished in revolutionary France. But she returned to Monticello and the life of slavery. Sally's son Madison later claimed that she had, in fact, become pregnant by Jefferson in Paris. So, by 1789, Sally was back at the Monticello plantation. It's been said that Jefferson enticed her with the promise that any children she had would be freed from slavery, when they reached the age of 21. In fact, it seems that her first child died in infancy, but she was to have six more by Jefferson. Sally lived out the rest of her life in Monticello, working as a maid and a seamstress. She died in 1835 at the age of 61 or 62, living to see all of her children freed from slavery, although she never was formally so herself, as far as we know. Until 2017, it was believed that no trace of Sally remained at Monticello. But then came an extraordinary discovery in 2017. The Monticello room where Sally had lived. The tiny room, just 13 feet by a little less than 15 feet, dates from 1809 and is in a wing of the Monticello house next to Jefferson's bedroom. It's currently being restored and will be open to the public when work is completed. Monticello's director of restoration, Gardner Halleck, told NBC, This discovery gives us a sense of how enslaved people were living. Some of Sally's children may have been born in this room. Now at least, Sally Hemming's life at Monticello has a contemporary physical presence.